And then I drove out of Pittsburgh 90 miles to Conneaut Lake, the home of the uh, famous and dilapidated Conneaut Lake Park, where I would go, not mere miles from where I grew up, man, like up there, uh, Crawford County, uh, uh, close to Erie. Uh, right down the road from Meadville, or as you know on this show in the history of the lore, Meadville. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and my sister joined me. And this is the first time that I sat and watched a pro wrestling show that wasn't in my backyard um, with my sister. And if you didn't see the video, she has a connection because... Um, um, her friend's son is uh, Kid Quick with one of the midget wrestling groups. Uh, so there you go. She's very familiar. So I think he was a champion for a bit, too. We watched him wrestle in the parking lot of the Quaker Steak and Lube in Sharon, Pennsylvania. Um, the original. The original Quaker Steak, by the way. Uh, dude, this show, Mike, if I told you you paid $25 for a ticket, okay? Mm-hmm. And you watched three matches that involved collectively four different wrestlers. What would you think? I think it sounds like fun. By the way, the group is called Midgets with Attitudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Short slogan. <clears throat> this show was three hours. Short show. Three hours. Three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, it started. He introduced everybody. The four wrestlers, the referee, the uh, the lady that I think just um, dressed as an elf, of course, that I think mostly just hung out at the merch booth all night. I don't know if she normally does something. I don't did know. You, did you tell her Santa was looking for her? I'm not. No. No, I did not. No, I okay. did not. There was a warning at the beginning. Do not pat them on their heads. Because there was the, like, because like, they had the ringside, and it was like, hey, they're going to interact with you guys, you know, and, and stuff like that. And there was like, you know, the general no touching, no throwing, da 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 da. Mm-hmm. There was actually a no tossing role. Um, well, shit. Wait, no, wait, 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 we get to the reason. I'm out. In a little bit. You're out. You're out. So, so, so. This is ha- this is a drunk fest. This and this, by the way, this is taking place at Hotel Kanye, which is certifiably certifiably haunted. Okay, mm-hmm. and it's in okay. the room where my prom was, and it's probably about. Is 100... it haunted by the ghost of the Haiti kid? No, her name is Elizabeth. Ooh. Oh come okay. on! You didn't go the easy one, Elizabeth. Yeah. I thought you were gonna go macho I, I on me. No, but what does that have to do with midgets? No, it has nothing. I'm just talking about the venue. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, although okay. one one wore the I love this shirt that they have there. I haven't seen this since I, I haven't been there for a few years. But they for the hotel Kanye, they have a uh, shirt that says Elizabeth stays here. Why won't you? Hmm. That was fun. I mean, Anyways. she also does not pay. So they start, they introduce everybody, then they go out. By the way, in this first hour, the referee got in, got an introduction three times. There's like a DJ with a microphone that's like running this thing. He's like the wrangler of this whole thing, right? Um, so it's run like a, a bar DJ show kind of thing, the way he's announcing everybody. There's music playing before the matches, before we even got to the match. First, there's an incident. Did the introductions, getting ready. The DJ is going... The guy, the announcer is going to the DJ booth, which is right behind us, like four rows back, and then to the ring and back and forth as he's like, like, like wrangling everything. I guess. Um, he he he. Uh, so somebody comes up and says there's a problem. He's like, hold on, we gotta take care of something. He's like, like uh, the cops were called. I thought one of my one of my guys like did something, had drugs on them, something. It turns out that somebody slapped the, some lady in the hand three times really hard, and they got mad and called the cops. Hmm. So, okay. so he okay. gave them their money back and told them to get out of here. 
So, and then we go into the referee is in there and he's been doing push-ups and stuff just to kind of mess with people, you know, while we're waiting for whatever's going on. And then we just like have a push-off contest. People were dropping 20 bucks to go in. Three people dropped 20 bucks to go in and do the, to have a push-up contest with them. Then we have the match. It's a hardcore match. They go in the crowd. It looks like an RWA show. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, and, and that it was it was fun. It was fun. And then like so we have the one single match. We are now an hour after bell time, Mike. We're gonna take a three song mm-hmm. break. We're gonna take a three song break. So short hiatus. Yes, yes. So we come back. We have a match. Uh, this one more hardcore comes over our way. More trash cans, chairs. You know, classic hardcore match. Just fun. These guys are jumping off the top rope. Fun match. The one guy in it. By the way, he's by the Bronx, and I loved he had a T-shirt that I wish I would get you. It says, "Don't let me get Bronx on you," or "Don't make me get Bronx on you." I thought okay, of you, Mike. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And then it turns into who wants to staple him. Now, I have a question. Was this using one of those mini staples? No, it was a staple gun. I can't tell okay. you. I mean, I can imagine how long the staples were. Okay. Because I imagine they're like, yeah. And they're like, you can do it anywhere. You can do his, his forehead, his cheek, his arm, his nipples, his tongue. About three people did it. One dude did his tongue. And wow. I don't think I've seen the Okay. Tongue, so. Also, that's money. That's freaking dirty. Um, mm-hmm. And then, Mike, you know what happened next? What's that, Sork? Three song break. So another short hiatus. This is an hour. This was an hour. This was another hour. <laughs> Between the match and the staple thought. Okay. It's drunk entertainment. It was a blast. It's not an indie wrestling show. It's I, I don't even think this thing was registered with the State Athletic Commission. It couldn't have been. There's no way it was. Doesn't sound like it There's no been. way the State Athletic Commission was on with this thing. It's just a weird entertainment show. I think they barely call it wrestling. The ring is barely a ring. It's just it's a short ring. It's like literally like a foot off the ground. And, <laughs> and it's like a, that it, it's an eight by eight. Um, And then we go into the last match. And I'm like, what are they doing? I didn't see any more guys. We have all four in them. And we're having King in the ring. Mm-hmm. So. Battle Royal kind of thing. Do the thing. Guy wins. And then the guy that wins, they say, who wants to hit him in the head with a trash can? Mm-hmm. They okay. did a bid for this, Mike. I'm back in. I'm back in. They, were, they did a bid. Now, now Mike, Mike, at the beginning of November, I attended Mick Foley's uh, comedy show here in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Small room. I think they said they had like 95 people. But that's like, that was sold out at a Hard Rock Cafe down here in Pittsburgh in the South uh, uh, Station Square. Right, and he he auctions off the shirt that he wears every night for charity at the end of the show. I think okay. he got about eighty bucks for it. Right, this is Mick Foley. This mm-hmm. is my this is Mick G D Foley. Mm-hmm. My, I don't know if you saw the tweet, but Mike, can you can you imagine what how much somebody paid to hit a, hit this guy in the head with a trash can? I'm going to guess it's more than 80 bucks. $150. Wow. And it's hilarious. And I can't remember. I don't know if I put the the first. I think I put the second hit out. He did it twice. But the whole time, like, he's there and he's ready to do it. He's just ready to go. And the, and the DJ guys, like, keeps adjusting because it's one of those. It, it's been used, right? So there's edges. Mm-hmm. And if he oh, hits no. them, he just keeps adjusting it. And he keeps pausing and adjusting it because he's like, I don't want you to kill my guy. <laughs> right. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> so he hits him. And then and then the, the the receiver, he's just like, he just like, he's just like, hit me again. That was that was a wimpy hit. <laughs> and then he's getting and then like the DJ's getting pissed because he's like, dude, this guy paid. He shouldn't hit you again. <laughs> I'm worried about this guy. <laughs> you know, wow. so and that was it. And that was it. My sister had a blast. I had a blast. We got the bond over over midgets with attitude. And then I and then they're, they're they're like, yeah, this is like the third time we've been here. And I'm like, how do I get on the mailing list to know this? This is <laughs> also also like, 
apparently back home there's not a, I, there's no wrestling shows back home up in that area like just no wrestling shows like promotions right sometimes it's wrestling at the crawford county fair which is you know a few miles up the road and, and more than a few miles uh sometimes i saw one group from erie yeah they did that i, I think when somebody somebody did a show there at conyot lake one and i think it was for a wedding or some weird thing like that um like some people we know were on the show i was like what the hell is this thing guys Nothing else wrestling happens there except for midget wrestling. This is like the third promotion I know of that ran in the area. I don't think we get that much in Pittsburgh, Mike. So, anyways. So that was my Saturday. That was just Saturday. Wow. <laughs> and I drove home. I drove home. And got home at like 2 in the morning. So, But it was worth it. It was worth it.